If you're looking for a budget graphics tablet with good quality, then Wacom CTL472 is probably your best option. It costs around $50, but for a beginner artist or designer, it works just fine. In this tutorial, we'll discuss everything you need to know about this tablet. So let's get started. First, let's see what's inside the box. You will get the tablet, of course, some instruction manuals which we will never read, 3 extra nips and a nip remover, and a USB cable which is around 50 inches long, and the pen. So you are getting one tablet, some instruction manuals, 3 extra nips, a nip remover, and a USB cable, and the pen. The size of the tablet is 8.3 by 5.7 inches and the active area is 6 by 3.7 inches. The thickness of the tablet is 0.3 inch. Thickness doesn't matter unless it's like a brick. The tablet or the pen do not require any batteries or charging. You just need to connect it with a USB cable to your computer and you are good to go. I kinda like the back side of this tablet, it goes with my channel color. After connecting the tablet with your computer, you need to install the driver. Go to Google search and search for Wacom driver. Then click Drivers Wycom. Now type the model name of your tablet. In this case, it's Wycom CTL472. If you are a Mac user, then go for Mac OS driver. If you are a Windows user, then click Windows driver. After you install the driver, you will see a Windows like this. Before we go these settings, let's quickly compare the differences between a mouse and a tablet. While using a mouse, you move the mouse on a mouse pad or on a table to move the cursor. For a tablet, you just need to hover over the pen just like this. For left click, just touch the tab with the pen. And for right click, we'll talk about that in a minute. Also tablets are pressure sensitive. That means if you press softer, the line will be thinner. And as you press harder, it will get thicker. For this tablet, the pen pressure level is 2048, which is not so good. Okay, now let's come back to the tablet properties. Since this tablet does not have any express keys, so that it makes the setup much easier. This setup is for everything except Photoshop. The cool thing is that you can apply different setups for different programs. For Photoshop, I use these settings. If you want to change the pressure level or double click distance, you can do that from here. But I leave these settings as default. There are two buttons in the pen. I use the upper button as right click and I think everyone does the same. For the lower button, you can do this. Go to keyboard modifier. Check left alt and right click. So now if I open Photoshop, let me show you what happens. Hold the lower button and you don't have to touch the tablet, just hover over. Move it right to make it bigger. Move it left to make it smaller. Move it up to make it softer and move it down to make it harder. This is really helpful when you are drawing or retouching. If you want to add more programs, just click the plus icon here. Suppose I want to add Adobe Illustrator. Just click the program name and hit OK. Now we can set different setups for Illustrator. For Illustrator, I use these settings. Upper button is always the right click. And for the lower button, I use undo which is Ctrl plus Z in keyboard. To set that shortcut, go to keyboard, keystroke. Now press Ctrl and Z. You can also name this. See, we have different setups for Photoshop and Illustrator. Now if I go to Illustrator, let's see what happens. Suppose I'm drawing and want to undo the last step. So just press the lower button. It's gone. Cool, right? Now let's go to Mapping. The active area represents the whole monitor or the display you are using. There are different options that we don't need actually. But if you want to change the active areas, you can do that. Suppose you want to make the active area smaller. That means a smaller area will represent the monitor. But I will suggest not to do that. Since the tablet is already a small, so better not to do that. Also when you draw, you need a larger active area for precise control. Also another important thing is force proportion. Make sure you check this. It means the tablet will precisely represent the monitor or the display. There won't be any distortion. 
For drawing hair, the tablet works just fine. But it's not so good for retouching because of the low pen pressure levels. It's not like you cannot do retouching. You know retouching can be done with mouse and you can get a good result. But if you want better and faster result, go for something that has higher pen pressure levels. And finally, for drawing it's good. If you know how to draw then you can draw anything with this tablet. But one problem I'm facing is that you cannot use your fingers in this tablet. It doesn't support multi-touch. When I draw I need to rotate the image from time to time. So I have to use the keyboard. It would be much faster to rotate it with fingers. But you know that's okay. It only a $50 tab. And about the pen nib. You may ask how long nibs typically last. Well, that's totally depend on how frequently you use it. Okay, so this is pretty much all for today. I tried to cover almost everything and at the same time, I didn't want to make a long boring video. So I went kinda quickly. I hope you enjoyed this video and please do consider to subscribe to our channel. It really encourages us to create new videos for you. Also, you can check our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. Thank you so much for watching.